How does that yeah, bear come in? I understand what you mean now. I understand. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I didn't go to, I didn't go where Osama bin Laden was assassinated. I should just make that clear. I went to, <laughs> um, I, I went to Avtobad where it was the city where he was and he was assassinated in, right? I yeah. didn't go to the actual <laughs> exactly. plot of land because um, you can't go there anymore, actually. It's, they've knocked down the house and there's nothing there anyway. Okay. So yeah, I have been, I have done a lot of things that I think, uh, especially Indians might consider crazy. Even foreigners would consider going to Abdubad crazy, actually. Hey, this is your host, Manakshi Srivastava, also known as My Boho Voyage, and I welcome you to another amazing episode of Inspiring Explorers. And as the name suggests, Inspiring Explorers is all about inspiring you with the inspiring life journeys of some of the most successful personalities from around the world, and they also share with us some interesting travel experiences that are not limited to sightseeing. For this episode of Inspiring Explorers, we have an inspiring explorer who even though was born and raised in New Zealand, is so fascinated and attracted with India and its culture that he made it his full-time career. Yes, loving a country and its culture can also be turned into a full-time career in today's digital world. And you guessed it right, this famous India-loving YouTuber is none other than Carl Rock. Carl Rock is a Kiwi expat who through his videos takes his viewers on behind the scenes of incredible India and its neighbors. And he is also famous on the internet as the Hindi speaking foreigner. Carl has loved India ever since he was a teenager and so much that sometimes people believe that he might have even been an Indian in his past life. He does by the way speak Hindi like a native Hindi speaker. Carl visited India in 2013 and since then he has not just settled in India but has also married a beautiful Indian lady from Haryana, Manisha Malik. Through his videos, Carl Rock explores different parts of India and shares tips for foreigners to help them travel confidently and safely in India and helps people better understand the country. He was also described by the Indian Express as the modern day lonely planet guide. With over 2 million plus subscribers on YouTube, Carl's videos are not just loved by foreigners but by many Indians. Carl has visited every state and union territory in India and its culturally similar neighbours like Pakistan, Nepal and Bangladesh as well and aims to make everyone fall in love with India just like he has. In this episode of Inspiring Explorers, we'll dig deeper into Carl Rock's YouTube journey and learn some helpful tips and tricks on how to become a successful YouTuber. But before that, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe and share and also come connect with me on my Instagram at the rate my boho voyage. You can watch all my Inspiring Explorer episodes on my YouTube channel named my boho voyage spelled as m-y-b-o-h-o-v-o-y-a-g-e or you can listen to them on spotify apple podcast and google podcast geo Savan. just search for inspiring explorers on the apps and you'll find the show also all the links are mentioned in the description box below so without any further delays let me welcome our amazing guest for today carl rock So welcome to Inspiring Explorers, Carl. Super happy to have you on Inspiring Explorers. Thank you, Minakshi. Namaste, Ram Ram. <laughs> Namaste, Ram Ram. Or sab badhiya. Ha, bilkul, bilkul. Mumbai kaisa lag raha hai? I like Mumbai. It's it's a totally different vibe to where Manisha and I live in Delhi. It's like totally different. It's unique. Yes. Yes, it's it's wonderful. All right. So, uh, Carl, I want to ask you the journey of being a YouTuber. Like, I know it has been beautiful being a YouTuber and hitting 2 million subscribers. But then I want to know the behind the scenes of this journey of being a YouTuber, because, you know, that's the hardest part of, you know, continuing and keep going because hitting 2 million is not easy. So what was the behind the scenes of the YouTuber journey of yours? Yeah, so my journey with YouTube started like totally by accident. I didn't dream of being a YouTuber or even think I could be a YouTuber. It all happened just by a mistake. I was about to come to India for a really long trip for like a six months trip. And I'm like, maybe I can take a camera and maybe I can shoot a few videos that will help other people travel in India and enjoy it as much as I did or I do. And so I just went out and I brought this camera in New Zealand. It was a very small GoPro, like it was a GoPro Hero 5, which is even smaller than a normal GoPro. It's a cube. And I made my first kind of, I still make videos on that camera. Actually, I still use that camera to this day for a lot of stuff. 
And one of those videos that I made with that little camera went viral. And that's how my YouTube channel started. Wow. I just started uploading videos of me in India and someone shared a video of me speaking Hindi in Gurugram on Reddit. Oh, and nice. it went viral from there. And it just started going viral. And I just remember that night just sitting there going, whoa, it's like at a hundred thousand views now. And maybe this can be a career for me if I, you know, continue to enjoy making videos. And I did. And yeah, that was like three years ago, I think. And now it's at 2 million, but I don't really think about the numbers. I just make videos that I'm interested in. And I think if you do that, and there's always other people who are interested in what you're interested in. And that's what I've found. Exactly. And uh, it's been a beautiful one. Like, you have shared a lot of variety of videos, not just one travel vlog. It's like, you know, and, and especially from all the Indians, I would like to thank you. So because you're bursting those myths that India is a bad country, or it's not safe, but it is safe. It is not as bad as it's like on the news or the TV. It's better. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It is so, India is so different to what we see, what foreigners see in the news overseas. They only cover you know, the horrific stuff, the bad side. And yeah, India is so much different to that. And I wanted to add some balance into that conversation. And like a good example is my parents were thinking like that. They're like, why would we come to India? And, you know, I got married here and yeah. we brought my parents over and their minds were blown. They were like, they literally told me we were wrong. We were so wrong. And I think that's most foreigners experience when they do finally get to India. They're like, oh man, we were wrong about India. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, like, it's like Mexico, you know, they'll show you that about narcos and all, but it's, it's a different country and it's, it's beautiful. So the same is with India. We are, yeah. foreigners are very scared, I know, but then it's thanks to you. Now they know how to handle things. Like there are good and bad sides of everywhere. So they know both the sides. And yeah. uh, to add on to this, I, I watched all your videos and in that I saw mostly this is something that I, I really like this. You are a khatro ke khiladi, you know. <laughs> like you're too much <laughs> daring. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that daring. I like, yeah, I don't know. Why would you say that? Say, I don't yeah, know. I'll tell you why, why would I say that. So you're going into uh, Osama bin Laden's, uh, you know, assassination place. Then you're going near Khyber Pass. Then also I'm jealous because you can go to Pakistan and I cannot. <laughs> so I also want to. Do. <laughs> but then I'm also glad that you covered all of these places and I could watch oh. it like the Chitrali Bazaar. And then uh, then you're, you know, uh, yeah. you talked back to that person in uh, Delhi's Spice Market and then you know, all of these things that you do are really daring. Then you catch the scammers. So, you know, how does that yeah, dare come in? I understand what you mean now. I understand. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I didn't go to, I didn't go where Osama bin Laden was assassinated. I should just make that clear. I went to, um, I, I went to Abtobad where it was the city where he was and he was assassinated in, right? I yeah. didn't go to the actual <laughs> exactly. plot of land because... Um, you can't go there anymore, actually. It's, they've knocked down the house and there's nothing there anyway. Okay. So yeah, I have been, I have done a lot of things that I think, uh, especially Indians might consider crazy. Even foreigners would consider going to Abdubad crazy, actually. But I mean, in, in that video, you saw that it's actually just a normal place. And it's actually beautiful. And... It's actually very beautiful. Yeah. He chose a nice spot, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give him that. Yeah. So it, it's a beautiful hill station. Yeah. So. I think these things seem daring, but I don't know. It doesn't seem daring to me. It's just did you like tell nice did visit. you tell your parents you're going to Abtabad where Osama bin Laden was assassinated? <laughs> <laughs> what is their reaction? I, I, I told my parents I'm going to Pakistan, and they're like, "Oh, we don't think that's a good idea, Carl. Don't go to Pakistan." But yeah, it's all worked out all right for me. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful place, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of history and culture, just like India. So uh, I really loved your vlog of Chitrail Gali, you know, where the artisans are hand making everything and they cannot really sell it outside. That's sad, because it's beautiful and warm stuff there. So for winter. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I got to see that through your vlogs. And I'm really grateful for that. Because I couldn't, yeah, you know, I cannot go to Pakistan and see it myself. So yeah. This beautiful thing it's yeah i'm happy you. i got to sh i'm happy that i got the show indians pakistan because there's so many pakistanis watching my videos to experience india 
So I knew that Indians would also be interested in watching me in Pakistan. And I was interested in going because I've, I've been visiting, we're trying to visit every single state and union territory in India. And I've done that now. So then I'm like, where do I go next? Maybe I can go all around Pakistan because, you know, it used to be part of India. Exactly. It was in a lot of Indians want to visit and We'll yeah, hope. maybe one day it will be possible. Maybe one day. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. So yeah, okay. Instead of YouTube, you said you like by mistake it went viral and people started liking it and you went into this journey. So if you weren't a YouTuber, let's say, what other options would you have kept in mind for yourself? What would you have been if not YouTube? Oh, I'd still be in New Zealand and I'd just be working. Um, so before before YouTube, I was. I was working in New Zealand. I worked for in the music industry and I worked in IT. So if I wasn't doing YouTube, I would just be living in Auckland, New Zealand. And I probably, I would have transitioned into IT security. That's something that I'm interested in. Um, you know, fighting hackers and this type of stuff, securing companies. That's what I would have gone into. Awesome. And that is why you do all those scam videos because network security. That's awesome. Yeah, because I'm interested in, yeah, I would have been into network security. That's what I would have gone into. There's a few things that are kind of trending in the IT world, like um, data analytics, network security, and uh, artificial intelligence. So I would have gone into one of those fields if I wasn't doing YouTube. That's interesting. So I also did IT engineering and network security, but not as good as yours, of course. So yeah. ah. Yes. No, I'm sure it's better. Did you work as well? Are you uh, working right now? No, no, no. I, I actually quit my job. So what happened was I was into, like, I learned computers because uh, I loved learning computers, but then there was not, no clearance in my head. No, it's in, in India, they give you either be a doctor or an engineer. So those were the two fields that I mm -hmm. knew of. I did IT engineering because IT seemed easier for me. <laughs> so no maths because so I chose IT and then it was fun. I really enjoyed network security and object oriented programming and everything. So uh, then I uh, like after engineering, I sat home and I started selling art online. So I was interested in art yeah. as well. So I made a lot of money through that selling art online. And during that time, two years, I was in complete isolation. And I used to just do, you know, um, sell art, watch animes, sell art and watch animes. That's, all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the life. Yeah, that was like awesome life. And then I went to Uttarakhand for post-graduation. So that's Achoo. when I traveled more and more. And then I came into this field later after that. I got to know I can make a YouTube channel. And that time yeah. I was traveling, I did not make a YouTube channel. I'm so sad about it. Uh, <laughs> me too. Me too. For the first, the first, like I've been visiting India for like at least 12 or 13 years. And for the first 10 years, I guess I never made a video or anything, shared anything. So yeah, there was all that experience that led up to me starting the YouTube channel. Actually, it wasn't just one day I started it. It was like all that time before that 10 years before when I was traveling India, I was learning about India. Yes. Uh, like there's so much like. Uh, now back in 1992 we, we did not have cameras but uh i went to badrinath and badrinath was really raw at that time like because india was not yeah. developing as fast so uh there were hot springs and people would like natural hot springs and people would go you know boil rice in that so it was like a beautiful <laughs> wow. thing to watch and you could not take videos because there were no video cameras with us not even a picture because uh, you know because of all that fog you cannot take pictures and all but there's a very blurry picture of us our family with the badrina temple <laughs> that is all we have got from yeah. that but all uh, the memories you know uttarakhand was really yeah. raw i haven't i haven't seen it i spent a lot of time in landor like studying hindi at the hindi school there wow but yeah i didn't mm. see landor is beautiful yes. yeah landor yeah landor is beautiful it's out of this world so you're from uttarakhand now uh, no, I'm actually from nowhere, actually. Uh, like the place where I was born. But then I was there for just two months where I was born. And then we, my dad got transferred. So like mainly I'm from UP, Uttar Pradesh. So my relatives are all in Uttar Pradesh and spread around the world from there. But then mostly it was transfers and transfers every year, every two years, every year, every two years. So I'm not from a place really. Yeah. So, but I can say my roots are 
Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand was a part of Uttar Pradesh. So I could say yeah. that. I, I think you like the mountains because I've seen so much of, of your content in the mountains. Yeah, I fell in love with mountains. It was a change, you know, uh. like, like I mentioned, I went to post graduation in Dehradun. I did not think I'm going to love it that much, you know. So I was basically, it was outside of Dehradun, my college. So it's in where there are farms. So there were everywhere there were farms. In the center was our college. So there were times in the noon that me and my best friend would just sit in the farms just chill out you know doing nothing just yeah. talking and chilling in the sun and there's uh you know green land everywhere there's farms and then they they put in water for the farming you no know? so we'd like wait for the time it's gonna hit four o'clock and then the stream is gonna run from here so this is what <laughs> we used to do collecting bugs and all that was the life there so yeah so then i did shipping which was not really taught in my college but then i got job in shipping <laughs> and it was a very monotonous do job though but like watching ships mm -hmm. is like through your computer so if they're taking cargo mm -hmm. from here to uh, dubai it takes a week so for that week you're just sitting and that's when i left my job that uh, i need to do something <laughs> it's it's good yeah. it's, it's paying well but uh, it's not giving me that satisfaction no? so that's when i left it and then I yeah, I know that him. feeling. That's yeah. the same feeling that I had um, working in New Zealand. I wasn't satisfied and I wanted to do something which I would enjoy and which I could help others through rather than just making exactly. companies rich. I wanted to help just people enjoy something that I enjoyed. And India was my passion. So I decided to follow that passion for India. Okay. So you said India was your passion. So I would like to ask yeah. that uh, what really got you into, you know, choosing Indian culture? Like I watch a lot of K-dramas and Korean movies, but my turning point for learning Korean was watching Mr. Queen. So I got really like by default, my brain started understanding Korean. I did not know that I'm understanding it and I could catch words now. And the same was for yeah. Japan and Japanese. Like I, I love animes. So that's when I'm really, really like die hard. Like you are for India. I'm for India as uh, well as Japan and Korea. So. Good. What got you into Indian culture? What was that changing point for you? I can remember the moment. Uh, it was the very first time that I tried Indian food when I was in my teenage years. It must have been like 17 or so. And um, a girlfriend at the time, she was a, a New Zealander. She made butter chicken from a can. So wow. I don't think Indians will believe it, but yeah. they sell <laughs> they sell like pre-made curry in cans. And we just open the can and we heat it up in a pan. And oh. that's, that's curry and that's Indian food in New Zealand. And I'd never had Indian food before she's making it. And I'm like, I don't want to eat this. I don't know what this is. This was like, you know, 20 years ago and we didn't, food was different in New Zealand and we didn't have much variety, but anyway, she's like, just try it once Carl. And if you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. So she, she dips the spoon and then she gives me the spoon and I put it in my mouth and my mind just exploded from all those spices and the complex flavor of Indian food. And I just, that very second I fell in love and I think I had like two massive plates of this butter chicken from a can that night. And that was a big turning point when I was about 17. And from that moment, I started getting interested in everything to do with India. It started from the food, nah? and mm -hmm. I started exploring the different types of Indian food. And then I got into Bollywood. Then from Bollywood, I started getting interested in the Hindi language, just like you know, you and Japanese films and yeah. you know, Korean films. And it just went slowly from there for like years and years. And, yeah. and I knew it had become my passion and I knew I had to go to India. I had this feeling inside me, like, um, like this longing. And I just knew that India would be a place. I knew India was a place that I wanted to be. And as soon as I finally got to India and I stepped foot in India, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this feels good. I feel like I'm home. And so I had this very strong connection with India. I think it's, it came from my stomach. <laughs> and a lot of people have said, maybe you were Indian in a past life. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I think that's maybe the only way to explain it because it's hard to explain that strong connection that I have. And now I'm here, I'm living here, I'm married to an Indian and, you know, living an Indian life. I don't live like a foreigner here. I'm, you know, in a, in a Haryanvi family and living in Delhi. Yeah. You got the best family, Haryanvi family. <laughs> they, are, they are amazing. This I didn't know anything about Jats. I didn't know anything about Haryanvis. And 
but I'm so thankful that I married into a family like that. Now I realize the strength of a Haryanvi family yes. and Indian families in general, I think, actually. I think all Indian families are very strong. And yeah, they really stand up for me and they really take care of me and look after me. And I can always rely on my, my family here in India. Like I trust them with everything. Yes, they are wonderful. And I think that daring part that comes in you is because of that Haryanvi family as well, because <laughs> <laughs> they're very daring. Very yeah, they are, yeah, it's true. They're very brave and they're not afraid of anything is what I noticed because um, there was, there was one thing that happened when I noticed this. Um, my father-in-law, he posted our marriage photos on Facebook and someone commented like, oh, um, you shouldn't be getting your daughter married to an outsider, to a foreigner. She should be marrying inside her culture. And that's when I heard my father-in-law yelling at someone on the phone like, really yelling at the guy and telling him <laughs> something. And I'm like, Manisha, what's going on? Why is your dad so angry? I've never seen him angry like that. And she's like, oh, this guy commented this on Facebook and now he's blasting him, you know? So that was my father-in-law standing up for me and standing up for Manisha and saying, no, no, no. We live life open-minded in the way we want to live it. And that's when I realized like I'm part of this family and he's my father, he's standing up for me. So that felt really, really good. Exactly. Yes, they uh, Indian families do that for you. Like, I don't know. I think Asian families do that for you. Uh, like, I observed this in Singapore. I was like, uh, just like Indian parents only beat us, and only Indian parents are that strict, or they have you know those things for us set in their mind that you have to do this, to study hard, and all of that. But then I I observed this in Singapore. So when we were traveling in Singapore, so in the metros, you would see that they would go with their families. Like there will be dada, dadi, like the elders with you, mom and dads and the kid and the husband and wife. And you have to always respect your, you know, sasa, sir. So <laughs> I saw that in Singapore and those are Chinese families. So I was like, it's a, it, it runs in Asia. <laughs> I think it runs in Asia. Uh, Koreans do that too. Japanese do that too. So I'm like, it's an Asian thing. It's not just India. <laughs> Pakistan does yeah, that too. Yeah, true. I, I feel good about it because why wouldn't I want to respect my sasa so like they've done they've they stand up for me they give me everything so like it's only natural you know to respect them so much exactly yeah so yeah it's it's an Indian thing and yes you are an Indian I have seen you fighting in streets <laughs> like that like, <laughs> like an Indian <laughs> yeah that, that's one thing I learned in India like you have to stand up for yourself here yeah and you some, sometimes you have to fight back because people might walk on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just, if, if, if you don't fight back, sometimes you'll get taken advantage of is what yes. I mean. So yeah, no, that's true. India that's, makes you strong. Yes, and it's not because you're a foreigner. Uh, let me tell you that. It's not because you're a foreigner. So, so Indians do that with Indians as well. Like, if you would go to Banaras, so if you, they'll think you're a tourist. The moment you have a camera in your hand, this guy is a tourist. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they'll start giving up prices on the higher rate and you'll be like, I live here, I have relatives here and they'll be like, ha ha, sab kehte hai. <laughs> but you'll have to pay that much. So we literally have to fight and bargain on that, you know, like the boat rides and everything. So it's not because you're a foreign skin, it's, it's, no, it's no. they are like that in tourist places. So yeah. Yeah, and if it, if they think my wife's a foreigner, it's so funny. <laughs> They're like, ma'am, ma'am, where are you from? <laughs> She's like, it's Delhi. It's like, whoa, you speak Hindi as well? It's like, oh, God, so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing in India. So from your point of view, you have also been to Pakistan and you have been in India. So like if I would ask um, in your, you know, your observant eyes, because you have seen uh, both as a foreigner and as an Indian. So Pakistan and mm -hmm. India, what were the similarities or dissimilarities that you got to see in both the countries? The similarities are massive. Like Indians and Pakistanis are, are like just very similar. I mean, you guys come from the same place, so that's expected, right? The similarities, um, I think family is, the family structure is pretty similar. Both, both countries are family orientated. The language, obviously, like they speak Urdu, but we all, we all can understand exactly what they're saying yeah, when we're listening to their similar. Urdu. Yeah. Hindi and Urdu are very similar. I think they share like 80% of the same words. Yeah. And 
everybody in Pakistan knows what Patni means. You know what I mean? They know what Patni is. Yes. So even they're understanding Hindi as well when I would say Hindi patni. words there. They yes. know. Yeah. So yeah, family, language. The food is similar. Mm. Um, but there's one big difference with the food. Like they're a meat eating nation. Yeah. And yeah, the they don't have this big vegetarian flair or flavors like India does. Like India's king of vegetarian food and Pakistan does amazing, incredible meat dishes. That's one big difference. But you know, they eat chole, we eat chole, they eat dal, we eat dal. So there's still a huge similarity there as well. They love tea. They are huge tea drinkers as well, just like us in India. Yeah. So it's I don't know, the similarities are just just massive. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Your observations are really amazing. So what do you suggest to foreigners like to first visit India or first Pakistan? So like to get that cultural, you know. Definitely they should visit India first. Um, India, Pakistan is a more difficult country to travel, like no doubt about it. They don't have the same tourist infrastructure that India has and they don't have as many English speakers. So it's not, it can be hard to find uh, an English speaker there unlike in India. So yeah, India should be the first place. Exactly. Uh, like I mentioned before, like there goes a lot behind the scenes for your YouTube channel. So it's not easy to get there, oh. making videos and, you know, switching from that job. Even if we are IT engineers, it's still difficult to, you know, manage all of that. So how did you manage that? And that tips, some tips for content creators or YouTubers that have this as a living content creation as a living. Yeah, so I do everything on my own and still, still I do everything on my own. I, I edit my videos, I film my videos, I write the script, I do the description, I make the thumbnail, I literally do everything on my own. I make the, I make the subtitles um, sometimes as well. So I like keeping that control because like these videos are, are they're an expression of me. I can hire an editor, I can hire a producer or whatever, but it's going to change the content and as a youtuber people are connecting with you on a personal level and if you get too fancy and if the content gets too diluted and it's not representing you as a person people will tune out it becomes like a tv show so i mean my advice is just make videos that you would want to watch as a person and in those videos always try and teach people something or help them understand something People want to consume content, which helps them in some way with their life. So every one of my videos is always some kind of angle on it, whether I'm showing you how to avoid a scam or I'm showing you how to ride a train. There's always some kind of helpful angle for travelers who are coming to India. So yeah, th th those, that would be my advice. And that's what I still do to this day. Yeah. Try and help people with your videos and make videos that you're, that you'd watch yourself. That's literally all I do. That's wonderful. And uh, I also make my videos on my own and everything that, you know, everything is what I do. And then people are like, hire people from outside and I'm same thing. It, it changes what you are. So you can, and then you'll have to sit with them to explain them why you have to do this. <laughs> so it's better you do it on your own. It might, it's going to consume yeah. more time. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. If, I mean, I, I, some channels can do it because they have like a format and they stick to that format every single video. Yeah. But with travel content, people are connect, want to connect with us as people. Yeah. Yes, it's true. That's so true. Uh, so, yeah, you said when you were 12, you have been earning since you were 12. So what are the jobs yeah. did you do? And, uh, you know, what was the fun part of doing that as a 12 year old kid starting earning and managing finances? Yeah, when I was when I was young, I never got like pocket money or anything like my parents were really stingy like really cheap and it's, it's a good thing I think because it's made me who I am today so back then I had to start working really young if I wanted anything you know so I started at 12 with the paper run and as soon as I could as soon as I got to like age 15 I think it was I went to the supermarket and I got a job in the supermarket and I'd go and work there after school like three nights a week and they paid nothing, man. I, I, th I look back and I'm like, oh man, they really took advantage paying me so little. But I was happy because um, I got to buy the things that I wanted to buy. And, you know, it taught me a good lesson that I need to work for money. And 
not to waste money. Do not waste money because there's a lot of hard work behind it. So I learned those lessons really early and it's, it served me well in life. And so after working at a supermarket, I got a weekend job while I was studying at university. I got a weekend job at a record store, at a music store. And then I, then I got a job through university. And then that's when I started like full-time work. So yeah, I've been working since I was 12 and I wouldn't have it any other way. That's wonderful. And at such a young age that you said it right, that it helps you manage your finances and understand that you should not waste money on, you know, um, random things that are not useful. We do yeah, that a lot. A lot of us. End yeah, up I see that. it a lot. And it's, it's sad when you see people wasting other people's money, <laughs> which is usually <laughs> what it is. Exactly. Um, like I funded my own travel overseas when I was 17 because I had a job so I could I went to Australia at 17 with my own money like that was cool I felt good yes that's awesome so you also faced racism in India yeah I think I think everyone's seen that meme of me that went around when uh who was it it was a, a laborer at yeah. the spice market in Delhi he comes yes. up to me and he literally calls me corona he says tu corona hey and he's like telling me to get lost and get out of here. I mean, it's because I was a foreigner as well. <laughs> you have to put yourself in like, it was racist, but you have to put yourself in that guy's situation as well. Nah? He's yeah. a laborer. He's probably not so educated. He's probably been, uh, you don't know what media he's been consuming, what kind of propaganda and you don't know what's going on. And I don't know, like, I didn't feel... I don't feel too bad about it when I put myself in his situation and said, okay, well, I can understand why he might think that I'm spreading Corona. So yeah, that was an experience, but I mean, and it turned into a meme, which was pretty funny, but yeah, that was, that was one experience. Yeah. And one of like, uh, you get over it and you forgive, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I understand. It's not there. It's not his fault. Really. It's, it's what they're feeding on and what they're taught because they, they're not that educated yeah. so yeah um but i'm glad you're safe because that <laughs> that went really heated up <laughs> so I got... yeah i got really <laughs> heated really really heated that situation i thought he was gonna hit me it seemed like it was going that I was way scared too. <laughs> i was scared of yeah that. so that, yeah that was the worst situation and one more thing how do you bring that confidence do you know keep that camera on and face these situations uh, the normal ones are still a little better, you know, people observing you is fine. But like in these situations, you're still with your camera on. So where do you bring that confidence from? And any tips on that? <laughs> Just always, yeah, I got a tip for this. I always carry a camera with me and I'm not afraid to just hit the button on top of the GoPro and just have it filming. You have to carry that camera everywhere and always be ready to turn it on at whatever moment because so many interesting things happen in life that you need to capture. And that's literally how I make all my videos, just by carrying the camera. And that's how I've captured so many kind of interesting uh, experiences in India, just from having the camera in my pocket and pulling it out at that moment. So that's one big tip if you're a vlogger. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. All right, I remember that tip. And uh, another thing that, uh, you know, uh, we'll not talk about your blacklisting, but I would, I want to know that during that time when you were away from your family and your, uh, your wife for more than mm. 500 days, this is a lot, a lot. So you mm. mentioned you had panic attacks. So that mental health mm. was something that was affected to um, like mental health of everybody was affected during Corona as well. So yeah. How did you cope up with that and any tips for keeping that cool of mind during these times? Yeah, I think my experience was, uh, how would you say, extreme. And I don't think many people would be put under that much stress and pressure that I was put under when, you know, a government comes after you. So it was very, very stressful for me not being able to be near my family, not knowing what's going on not having any information about just what has happened and why it's happened because they didn't tell us anything. So that's, so I was feeling very like, um, I try not to think about it. Like I never, I don't take myself back to that, that moment in time because it was so difficult I, for me. I understand. Um, so I kind of block it out now, but one thing I did like to deal with that stress is meditation. 
that's the one thing which like helped me that entire time. And I would just sit there back on the bed, wherever I was in the world. And I just meditate every single day, sometimes twice a day. And I do, I was using the app Headspace and it was like 20 minute meditations. And that's what helped me relax and get peace of mind and just look forward and say, okay, everything's going to be all right in the end. Just keep going. This is the worst right now. Just keep going. And meditation is the one thing that helped me throughout my life, but especially in the hard times. So yeah, try meditation if you're having, if you're being put under so much stress like I was. True that. That's a good tip. Uh, what keeps yeah, sure. you going with your YouTube channel? Besides, uh, I know it's fun, but then it's yeah. also a lot of work behind the scenes. So what keeps you going? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, I think about that because when I'm not always going to be a YouTuber, right? Like there's going to be a time when I need to move on into something else. Um, so what keeps me going? What keeps me going is just the feedback I get from people and just knowing that I'm making an impact in the world and that I'm helping people travel safely and confidently in India. And then they write comments saying, Carl, my trip to India was incredible because of you. Thank you. That's like, that keeps me going. And I think that'll keep me going for a while yet. So it's just that feedback I get. I don't do it for anything else other than just helping people. And yeah, it's worked out for me. That's wonderful. That's superb, actually. And I see uh, a lot of uh, thanks from Indians as well, because you are posting. Yeah, things. yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the weird thing. Like I did, I did, I never made videos for Indians. I made them for foreigners. And <laughs> I was just surprised that so many Indians connected with them and that even Indians had the same problems that foreigners were having in India. Yeah, that was the other weird thing. I just assumed <laughs> Indians were like, rock solid couldn't be screwed with and everything was easy because they grew up here but the reality is like even traveling can be difficult for indians too so yeah like i'm helping a lot of south indians travel up north because even they don't understand some things that are happening in yes. north so it's that true. felt that that felt even more amazing to be helping indians in their own country like mind-blowing that's true actually because uh, <laughs> south of india is a lot different than the north of india so yeah, that's amazing. All right, so let's come to the travel experiences. You have had plenty and you have shared plenty, but something that you're not shared mm -hmm. uh, and cultural shocks in India and Pakistan. Cultural shocks. Man, I thought, I thought about this recently for a video that I was gonna do it on. I think like when I first came to India, everything was a cultural shock for me. Like every day was new there was always something happening on the street that I had no idea about. Maybe it was just like um, the guy who cycles around the societies and yells things, you know what I mean? Like he's like, Alu Lelo, or um, the guy who takes the rubbish, the recycling guy, everyone's yelling all these words <laughs> in Hindi everywhere. Yes. So there was a lot of stuff happening and every day was like a new learning experience for me. And I've learned so much and I've adapted so much that now nothing surprises me. Like I don't have these shocks, these cultural shocks anymore. Everything's just normal because I spent so much time in India and India is my home now. So not even man, seeing cows really on the road, like not even seeing cows oh, on the no. road. <laughs> no, I love, I mean, at the beginning it was, a, it was strange, but now I love cows and we have two cows in our village. So wow. And then I, I understand why my wife would go out and feed it one day or whatever would happen. So like, it all kind of makes sense to me now and I get it. But as a foreigner coming to India for the first time, they might not, they won't understand any of this and it will all be kind of new and a culture shock for them. So I try, I try my best to explain these things to foreigners in, the, in my videos just to demystify India and so they understand yeah. what's going on. Because people, it's it's all interesting things, you know. Mm -hmm. There's so much culture here. Yeah, like monkeys living with you and cows living with you. Everybody's living with you, <laughs> with you. Yeah, and like 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 the reason why someone like a woman outside would be feeding a rat. I'm mm -hmm. like, why is this lady feeding the rat, Manisha? And she's like, oh, you know, because uh, it's related to a god. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that's new to me as well. I didn't see anybody feeding rat so far. Oh, it's it's this bridge. Um, 
this bridge that connects Pahara Ganj to Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's that bridge at Pahara yeah. Ganj. Big giant. Yeah, there's yeah. rats coming in and out of all the holes there and right. a lot of people come and feed them there. Okay, cool. That's that's where I saw that. So that was a shock. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Couldn't understand. Yeah, like it's still a shock for me when a cow is sitting right middle middle of the highway and there are cars coming like in real speed. But they'd be chilling there and just sitting and you know like you yeah, manage it. That, <laughs> Not that's us. one thing that's I mean it scares me. Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want an accident to happen. But exactly. <laughs> but that's, that's it's how totally it is. It's normal. Yeah, it's normal in India. That's, that's beautiful too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any cultural shock in Pakistan? Although you have seen a lot of, uh, like, it's almost like India, but then any other cultural shock in Pakistan? I mean, <laughs> it was, this was, there's some things that I can't believe when I see it there in Pakistan. So, for example, I found a market in Lahore which specializes in Indian goods. I would have never imagined that in a million years that you could go to a market in Lahore and they just have all the all the hair oils and all this Ayurvedic product and just all this Indian stuff sitting there for sale. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I found that really surprising. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff there as well and stuff, a lot of stuff that will blow your mind as well. Yeah, like um, something that happened in Dubai was that uh, Rexona was a brand in India and it, it just mm. in the 90s. Now it's not in India. So there was Rexona and there's other different brands that have stopped being used in India. But when I went to grocery store in Dubai, so when I teach to be travel as a local, I ask you to go into grocery stores rather than to go for shopping in souvenir shops like go to the grocery stores that's where the locals would go what if you were in a job in dubai what yeah. would you do you would go to a grocery store you would travel in a metro rather yeah. than you know like living there so i teach the uh, traveling as local like earth is our home and Perfect. you're not different so i went yes. to a grocery store and i found rexona there and those hina brands uh, like the one that you color your hair with in indian ayurved so and I'm like really shocked. I'm like, this is stopped here in India. Why is, what is it doing here? So I took a picture of it and I used to not make blogs back then. And I'm really sad about that. But there was this entire grocery store where the nineties products that have been stopped here in India were now available in Dubai's grocery store. So like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> I, I, I can think of one more kind of, it wasn't a shock though. It was the opposite yeah. of shock. I was, I was happy because yeah. In Pakistan, you don't find alcohol stores and you don't see drunk people, for example. So that's like, that would be shocking for a lot of foreigners going to this mm. country and being like, well, it's a dry country and there's not drunk people over the place. So that was something which was a shock, but like a good one. I was like really happy that I don't have to deal with that because I don't drink or do anything. So I yeah. really, I really like that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, in Muslim countries, they don't sell alcohol because it's banned in their, in their culture, it's banned. Mm. So, like, I went to Surabaya and that, like, that's when I knew it. I didn't knew it before that. So, when yeah. I went to Surabaya, Surabaya is a part of Indonesia that is more prominently Muslim, towards Muslim side. Yeah. So, they do not sell alcohol as well. So, we would be on the 14th yeah. lounge in our hotel, drinking water and chai. So, that's what we were doing <laughs> because there was... That's, yeah. that's what I like. And um, yeah. so in Pakistan, they, the men sit around drinking like warm milk instead. It's just, it's How really cool. funny for a foreigner to see that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's very, very innocent, very innocent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. That's nice. I'll, I'll, I'll mention all the links in the description box below to check those videos out if you want to. Um, all right. So let's do a little thing. Okay, so you're the Hindi speaking foreigner and um, <laughs> all right so uh it's like um your hindi accent is really pretty so let's hear your <laughs> hindi accent <laughs> okay so we'll do some cities you just repronounce it for me okay okay oh you're gonna give me the hard ones i know it <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be so hard i couldn't think of many but if you have something in mind tell me okay all right so it's uh firstly with, we'll start with a very simple one it's banaras uh, Banaras. Wait, I always call it. I always call it Varanasi, but Banaras. Yeah, it's it's Banaras. it's Bana Bar Aras, Banaras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Varanasi, Kashi, and it's also Banaras. It's it's all three are Banaras. I'm gonna oh, make Kashi a blog well. on that. Kashi. 
yes it's kashi yeah. because it's uh, shiv ki nagri kashi is the very old name was like thousands and thousands years ago it was called kashi then it became banaras and then it became varanasi so okay so i'll say the second name uh, of banaras varanasi varanasi <laughs> yeah so there's a rada rada sound but then everybody says oh yeah so that that ara is really hard for us yeah. foreigners because we yes. don't have it and yes. i'm always trying to perfect that like the word um larka larka or larki i'm always trying to get it it's difficult <laughs> so let's do a larka 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 larki larke <laughs> good did i get it i think it's close enough close Maybe. enough yes yeah but that's how we also pronounce many things wrong especially korean such a different language what they're saying is not what they're saying <laughs> all right the next one is alaknanda well Al- alaknanda 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 it's a river in um, near badrinath so it's in uttarakhand it's a very uh, uh, famous river alaknanda is one of the most holiest rivers in india so all right uh, Next one is Prayagraj. 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 Yes, good. Good enough. All right, so I'm going to say a different name for Kolkata, all right? So like you might have heard of Kolkata. So there's a different name that the locals used to say they don't always say it. So it's Kolkata. Ha, Kolkata. Kolkata. <laughs> That's nice. Do you have any tough one for me? <laughs> oh, I have one. I have one one pronunciation. So I was just having this conversation when like the property rates are going to be really hyped and they're like dead crore and I could not say it properly. Uh, <laughs> dead crore yeah, yeah, is yeah. such a tongue twister. Dead crore. Dead crore. Yeah, dead crore. <laughs> dead crore. It's a lot of uh, the Ta-da. tongue, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, right. I can ask you a question. Yes. What's what's az what's azadi in Hindi? Azadi in Hindi, it's freedom. Yeah, but no, 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 that's English. Freedom in English. Acha ha, sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> azadi in Hindi, swatantrata. Uh, yeah, you got it. Good one, nice one. My wife always teases me because I say all these funny words which no one says, like swat swat swatantrata. but yeah so i learned a lot of these kind of should hindi words and my wife yeah, like no actually, one says that like see i couldn't i i just translated it for you in english and i'm like this is hindi because in our head it's like urdu and hindi is so similar we forget that this is a urdu word and this is a hindi word and what about um what's what's pradhan mantri in urdu okay i know some words i'm not sure of political words wazir bhi hota hai yeah yeah wazir wazir azam wazir azam wazir azam yeah we are a lot mixed with hindi and urdu and we are so mixed that we cannot differentiate a lot we forget <laughs> <laughs> we forget that it's it's, yeah. it's, it's urdu and it's, it's hindi yeah that's wonderful uh, can i get one or two experiences yeah. around the world like not india and pakistan something else So yeah before I went to India I traveled a lot in like US um Europe but I never really connected with these places and I was ne- never really that interested in these places Europe America the west but the other country I really enjoy besides India um would be Fiji and Fiji is like these 300 little beautiful tropical islands kind of like Tahiti or Bora Bora and it's it's 3 hours from where i'm from from new zealand and the interesting thing in that country is 50% of the population comes from india so it's kind of it's kind of like this indian island although the locals will hate me saying that so there's like a, a mixture of um indigenous people and indians there and i really love that vibe and you can go and see the most incredible islands there and there's one thing that really stuck with me um they take you swimming with these things called manta rays so you're in the middle of nowhere and you're swimming with a manta ray which is like a stingray except oh. like way bigger than a stingray it's a giant stingray and they're like they're like 20 meters below you swimming in a group together and you're kind of floating on top watching these manta wow. rays swim under you and they're so majestic and they don't harm um humans they're they're very peaceful animals that was like 
the one experience of real, that that really stuck with me if we're not talking about india wonderful but you did talk about india there's a lot of india in fiji <laughs> <laughs> there's always an indian connection for me with you, know? you yes and you yeah. you you know you're when you when when we say you know you're truly indian in the terms that we say hey instead of what <laughs> so that's hey. really yes when i say hey, what uh you're like hey like, instead of what we'll be like hey <laughs> yeah i do that a lot in my next video yeah like, yeah it's just like a natural <laughs> reaction now like bobbing my head or being like hey you know like <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's cool that's cool all right one more thing uh you are yeah. uh you were really confused with pewdiepie a lot but the people oh, still man. do <laughs> so what's yeah. that experience like <laughs> it's it's like i've become like a walking meme i feel like i'm a, like a, a real life meme of pewdiepie so <laughs> people in the street in india will come up to me and they'll be like oh bro are you, are you pewdiepie like and they're serious they're totally serious and i'd be like yeah 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 let's take a photo and they're like wow we met pewdiepie got a photo of pewdiepie and i've done that multiple times and because i've always got my camera in my pocket i pull it out and i film me kind of trolling them yeah <laughs> and it it's just turned into a huge joke and i posted those videos online and everyone's just laughing because you know i i can see the similarity as well except I look like his dad like an older version of Judy Pie so it's it's just hilarious and I like I like to laugh and I think it's good to laugh at yourself as well. Yeah that's amazing and memes are the <laughs> new way of marketing so <laughs> that's cool. And you never exactly. deny it that's the fun part you never deny it. <laughs> You're always like Oh no, yes. you got to have you got to have fun it's a harmless joke so yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people have like clicked my thumbnails on YouTube thinking I'm Judy Pie. Hmm. So it's brought in a lot of viewers to my channel as well just because of that. It's just it's <laughs> just funny. Yes, that's that's amazing. But they got help from that too. So good for us. All right. <laughs> so any um any last message for our listeners and viewers? Oh. I mean what I would say is come to India. <laughs> to all foreigners come to India and yeah experience incredible India it will be a life changing experience for you i can guarantee you and you'll come back with a little part of india inside you seriously i'm, I'm not kidding it's that kind of experience coming to india and spending time with indian people wonderful thank you so much for that awesome <laughs> thank you so much for this entire conversation carl this was wonderful talking to you thank you so much for your time and all the knowledge you shared with us today let's my pleasure thank you so much for having me all right then namaste call thank you for that namaste lovely to meet you aapse milka acha laga mere ko bhi bahut acha laga <laughs> okay bye 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 thank you so this was carl rocks inspiring life journey so far and some interesting travel experiences thank you so much for giving your precious time to this podcast if this episode was inspiring and insightful please do drop a comment on my instagram and youtube at rate my boho voyage Also do check out my YouTube channel at the rate my boho voyage for the video version of this episode. Please do subscribe and give a 5 star rating and hopefully write a review for inspiring explorers. Also please don't forget to connect with me on Instagram and YouTube. Drop me a hi or send me a comment so that I know we are in this journey together. This has been Akshay Shrivastava your host for inspiring explorers saying goodbye. See you next week with an amazing inspiring interview. Till then take care.